Dr. Hugh Ross is with us now. Welcome to Inter Interactive. We appreciate you being here. Thank you. You say science and faith are allies yes. and they're not enemies and that the Bible supports that. Tell us about that. Well, the Bible teaches that God gave us two books of revelation, the book of nature and the book of scripture. Actually commands us to study both so that we can see the revelation that God gives to us. They corroborate one another. So just like uh, Hebrews and Romans uh, corroborate one another, so does uh, the book of nature and the book of scripture. Do you think that some Christians sometimes naively think that they can't go to science because it will not mesh with the Bible? Okay. Yeah, they're worried that it won't mesh. Mm -hmm. uh, but likewise, we've got the 66 books of the Bible. Some people worry that there's going to be contradictions between the books. I see this as an exhortation. This is the word of God. Study it and see how you can take it literally and consistently. And in your own life, I mean, you started studying science, which right. brought you to faith. Tell us about that. Right. Well, I mean, I started studying astronomy when I was seven years of age. And by age 16, realized that the universe had to have a beginning. And if there's a beginning, there's got to be a beginner. So then I started studying the great philosophers to see what they had to say and realize that what they were teaching contradicted what I was learning in astrophysics. Then I looked through the world's holy books. And there was one book, the Bible, uh, that perfectly meshed with the findings I was finding in astrophysics. In fact, I discovered that the Bible actually laid out all the fundamental features of what we refer to as Big Bang cosmology thousands of years before any scientists even had a hint that the universe had these characteristics. Okay, now you say Big Bang or Big Bang theory, right? And a lot right. of Christians will say, wait a second, that contradicts the creation account. What do you say to that? Well, I say you need to look at what the Big Bang teaches, that there is a beginning to the universe, not just of matter and energy, but space and time itself. And what's interesting is of all the world's holy books, the Bible stands alone in saying the beginning of the universe is the beginning of space and time. How the universe expands from that space-time beginning. No other holy book speaks about the expansion of the universe except the Bible. No scientist thought about an expanding universe until the 20th century. So I was impressed that thousands of years ago you got six different Bible authors telling us we live in an expanding universe. Now, another area you can get pushback from the Christian community is this, the literal six-day creation account. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it's not enough to take the Bible literally. You have to take it literally and consistently. And notice this is an English language controversy. In English, we have a huge vocabulary. Hebrew is a small vocabulary. The word day has four distinct literal definitions. And so I believe that God created in six literal days. But one of the literal definitions for the Hebrew word yom is a long period of time. And the only way I can read all 66 books of the Bible, literally and consistently, is if I understand that these days of creation are six consecutive long periods of time. After all of your study, how old do you think the Earth is? 4.5662 billion years. How can you possibly come to that figure? Well, because of the accuracy of the scientific tools that we have to measure the age of the universe. I mean, if you use the right radiometric dating tools, you literally can get five decimal place precision. And it's not the only method. Every method we have for dating the age of the Earth is consistent with four and a half billion years. How do you think the Bible can stand up against scientific scrutiny? It stands up very well. I mean, that's what brought me to faith in Christ is realizing everything the Bible said about nature we can prove is correct. And it actually predicted future scientific discoveries. So that's what persuaded me. This book and this book alone is the inspired, inerrant word of God. Even when we look at things like the perfect distance, and please talk about it, that the earth is from the sun, right? I mean, a little closer, a little further either way, and it's destructive. Well, independent of the Bible, we got what you call the fine-tuning argument, that there's literally hundreds of different features of our galaxy and our planetary system of our planet that must be extraordinarily fine-tuned in order for life even to be possible here on planet Earth. What is it that you most want readers to take away from your books? Because I think a lot of times there's controversy surrounding these things, right? And we can get so caught up in those elements, perhaps we're not focusing on the right thing, which is the creator itself. Well, it's one thing to have all the right arguments. It's how you present those arguments. Second Corinthians 5 says that we are called to be ambassadors for peace. 
And Jesus said, you'll know my, your, their, my disciples because of your love for one another. So how we treat one another with these church dividing issues is critical. Uh, can we resolve these controversies with gentleness and respect and love? And this is one issue, the creation day controversy, where that's been missing. And so my goal is to bring about resolution and peace in a way that non-Christians are going to say, we can trust these Christians to help us come to peace with God because of the way they treat one another. And if I may paraphrase what I heard you say on the 700 Club program, which was we need to focus on who did the creating and why and not so much the when. Right. The when is the least important issue. It has nothing to do with salvation. Who creates, why and how he creates, those are the important issues. And the Bible really gives you a lot of content on that. Excellent. Thank you so much. Well, if you want to learn more about how science and faith converge, go to www.reasons.org. Dr. Ross's books, Navigating Genesis and Matter of Days, are available nationwide and wherever books are sold. Dr. Ross, thanks for being here. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. It.